Welcome back to the channel, guys, where today we're going to be seeing Sam at Golf Repairs for you at Evolution Golf. Evolution Golf Academy at Omenfield, yeah. And we're going to be observing Dan's wedge fitting. Dan, you've never had a wedge fitting before, have you? I haven't. Um, I've what, had irons, I've what, had driver. What are you playing? Uh, Cleveland RTX zip cores. And why didn't you get a fitting? I don't know, I've just never had a wedge fitting. It's never entered me to have why, one. Go on, why? I don't know, I just honestly I felt probably weren't needed. You did, weren't needed? No, like wedges. Get in the comments enough. guys, have you had a wedge fitting? And if not, why haven't you had a wedge fitting? Because I think it's a, a part of the bag that everybody overlooks. You go and get your woods fitted, yep. you go and get your irons fitted, it comes to wedges and you think, well, I'll just match him with same, sh you know, s same length and grip and happy days. I'll just get wedge flex. Yeah. People seem to overlook it. No, they do. So we're going to have a wedge fitting today and, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's not that necessary. I don't know, but we're going to have a wedge fitting with Sam to see what a full wedge fitting actually, you know, what occurs in a wedge yeah. fitting, but see how much different it actually makes. Because I think we can all agree and I don't mean to be, you're not the most confident chipper in the world. Terrible chipper. You've even started chipping one-handed. Yeah, which has helped. <laughs> <laughs> which has actually helped. Um, so it's going to be an interesting fitting. Um, I'm going to be observing and yeah, let's see if we can improve your wedge game. Yeah, so what we're going to do, Dan, uh, same as Gary at the beginning, we're going to get you hitting on the kind of shot analysis software in here, get the numbers, and then when we've kind of started to narrow it down, I'll get you on the on-course practice so you can basically hit onto proper greens and we can then kind of make it a bit more realistic, really. Yep. And then to fin finalise off, we're then going to go up to the short game area of the golf club and get you hitting off proper turf, you know, round okay. the green, little chips, little pitches, and, and just see, um, you know, then we can kind of work out what's going to be best for you, basically. So again, if you can kind of, you know, hit some shots, tell me, you know, good, bad, good shots, bad shots, you know, if you think it's a bit different to normal, just so I can get some feedback, really. Yeah, that felt good. Whatever. So what's normally your main bad shot, would you say, with? Heavy. Heavy. Catching it, yeah, Bits. especially with wedges. Any left or right, generally? <coughs> no, not really. Just... Just a bit steep? Yeah, Okay. very much so. <coughs> you don't take deer if you take trenches. <laughs> Could climb in them after. <laughs> now, that's the thing as well. You, you think to kind of comparing to, you know, say like a driver, the more you spin it, the shorter it's going to go. Yeah, yeah. So again, it's whether it's you maybe have to go stronger loft to kind of get your gap in right. Yeah. But like I said, anything in 10,000 plus is generally D, especially a sand wedge. You know, lob wedge, you'd spin it even more. So, you know, same there, your current wedge is obviously groovy, a bit worn down, you know, not too bad spin really to start. So if you go one more for me. Heavy again. Yeah, it's a little bit left as well. Yeah, so ball speed drops, the total has just dropped a little bit. Yeah, so if, like, so if we look at the data here, um, so like I said, spin rates, you're averaging 10,000 just over, so that's not too bad at all. Bit of a fluctuation, but again, if you're obviously catching it a bit heavy, yeah, yeah. You know, that can change. Launch is consistent, which is good. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's for me, like I said, it's getting that connection, and then, you know, if you look at kind of where you're missing, everything's gone left sided. Yeah. So, I mean, what, what did you play irons at? So have they, have they been fitted? Yeah, they're, fitted, they're one degree flat. Uh, right, okay. So like I said, if, if they're just been, have they been brought off the shelf, your current irons? Yeah, it's, so stand, I'd imagine it's standard. But... It should be just standard. Yeah, like so they just seem standard. Are they the grips as they're well? They're the uh, famous grips. Oh, so they don't feel too bad. I don't know if I will point out to people watching, we don't make orange in mid-size as like a genuine product. Yeah. So I suppose if you wanted orange in mid-size, you would have to go to you, know. <laughs> you would have to go that way. Um, but like I said, obviously, you know, just a dynamic gold spinner wedge. Um, so kind of like a stock stock shaft, you? but again, it's designed to try and help with a spin. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, obviously standard length, standard lie. 
again, it's double checking that's going to be right. And like I said, a lot of times I like to go a little bit flatter with your wedges when you're eyeing, depending on how much you use it for kind of full shots or chipping around the green. So again, if you're one degree you know, flat in your irons, you could potentially be maybe two degree flat in your wedges. Okay. Um, so obviously that might be explaining why everything's going a little bit left. So from that little bit of data that you've seen so far, yeah. what would you think in terms of, where would you be starting on shafts? Yeah, so then obviously I'd always base it, probably to starting point would be like your current shafts. So we've just sort of come in your Project X 6.5 you've got in your current iron. Yeah. So I think we'll probably start as a reference point, just because you're used to the feel. We know you've been fitted so that shaft works well. But again, being that type of profile of shaft, we are designed generally, in Iron's case anyway, to be a bit lower spinning. So obviously we want to make sure we don't be losing that spin. But yeah, I think, um, like I said, that'll be a reference point. Like I said, we'll do a static fit measurement, um, like I said, to double check you know, what your starting point is for your length, your lie. And then like I said, we'll start with the same shaft as your Iron's. And like I said, it's a good place to start. And then we can go from there and, and see if what numbers change and what yeah, numbers get worse or get better and then we can kind of work so it out. Just want to double check basically that they are kind of you know standard length. So I said 35 and a quarter, that's reading, um, which said should be fine at standard length. Like I so said, your lob wedge I'm guessing would be 35, gap wedge probably 35 and a half. We generally go to quarter and inch increments for your wedges. Um, so like I said, we'll, we'll do a static fit measurement now. Like I said, work out reference point to start with and then uh, like so we'll get you the project 6.5 and Go from there, really. Um, so, what's your height, Dan? Uh, it's about six, six one. Okay, that's fine, no problem. We we'll just need that ruler. Yeah, so if you can keep your back straight, feet shoulder width apart, and your palms facing outwards to your sides, I'll do okay. your wrist to floor measurement. Like so, just so we can get a, a starting point, basically. Like I said, yeah, it's a thirty-seven and a half. So I said, I always use a ping chart. It's easier to kind of explain to people, really. Yep. Um, so I said six foot, you know, like I said, your arms are a quarter inch longer than standard. So it makes sense, you know, ping there always go standard or half an inch, so you can go in between. But I said, that's interesting. It's 37 and a half going across. It's kind of the same between white and silver dot, okay. which is very upright. And again, if your arms are one degree flat, it, it's very different spec, but there's a lot of factors you can go into, obviously. That's a reference point to start off your physical build, but it all depends how you swing the club as well. Oh, yeah. And like I said, especially with you hitting it kind of left to start with, I think we will try a little bit flatter, see how it goes, yeah. and then uh, we'll go from there. And like I said, so this, this is always just a, just a starting point, but it's not always the case that you should be that set up. I'm going to go one degree flatter for now, and then like I said, I'm going to start with Project X 6.5. And like I said, I've built quite a lot of these shafts, just slightly different playing lengths, so I'll just double check that... Um, this player lamp's fine, I think it will be. So obviously it'd be great if we can get it a you know, quarter, in, uh, quarter inch longer to kind of start with. So let's have a look. Yeah, perfect. So 35 and a half. It's a quarter of an inch longer than what you're currently using. Okay. Um, like I said, this is a 54, so we'll bear that in mind for now in terms of distance. We can change it to 56 but it only plays in standard lies. So, like, so for now, I just want to try the lie angle. Um, oh so like I said, we'll expect the distance to go up a little bit, but for me, it's more kind of dispersion and you know, the launch and spin, really. <laughs> I mentioned that one. It feels like there's no weight in this shaft at all. Well, it feels, what, lighter? Yeah, it feels like. Oh, so we've not checked the swing weight yet. So again, you know, we've been go looking at the swing weight in drivers so far and obviously other clubs, but it should be the same for everything. You know, we need to be, you know, checking swing weight in all clubs, make sure everything's kind of balancing correctly. So like I said, we check your current one to start. Again, we are a mid-size grip, so we need to bear that in mind. Yep. Yeah, but there... So pretty, it's quite light, so just over D1. So I'm a little bit on light side, but again, mid-size grip is probably a reason it's gotten a bit lighter. And again, this should be heavier. Do you think you think. the mass of the total foot that he's thinking about? Maybe, obviously the, the, the grips, well, another good point with the Timu grips is, it'd be interesting to see what they weigh compared to an actual yeah. genuine grip. Because again, they could be quite a bit heavier, and again, that could like throw some bits out. 
And then let's if we check. Yeah, so the swing weight of this is a lot heavier. But you said you feel like you can't feel the head. No, I can feel the head. I feel like there's nothing in the shaft. Oh, okay, I understand that. So yeah. I could just feel the head and that's it. Yeah, which would be more... <clears throat> yeah, like I said, it's got a lot heavier. Like I said, that's D7 and a half. So even if we went to mid-size grip, we'd probably go to least about D5, which is a big difference. But yeah. obviously we're going a little bit longer, which will make it go heavier. And I think the shaft's a little bit heavier. Not much, but a fraction, about five grams. Um, and again, in terms of like swing weight, and it's a little bit more awkward with wedges because... Especially with TaylorMade, you haven't got kind of like a weight port to change the weight in the head. Um, there's a few ways you can go about it, but it's more kind of, you'd have to like kind of balance the club. Yeah. And again, it's adding more mass, so it, it doesn't, it's not the best thing to do. Uh, but like I said, obviously we can look at shaft options, which would be a bit lighter, you know, which might help you also get a similar feel yeah. to what you, you've got currently and which you prefer. Yeah, I mean, distance-wise, like I said, obviously, 54 degree of management, so we know it's going to go a bit further, but spin's dropped a little bit, and you've got to think them grooves will be a lot kind of fresher as well, yeah. so I think a lot of that will be down to the shaft. Okay, let's check the data for now, then. Obviously, I'll take out the uh, unmentionable. <laughs> You ever seen that? Which one was it? I thought we were already there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a good try. <laughs> yeah, so if you look at the data already, definitely a bit of a drop in spin. Also, we've gone two degrees stronger, which in theory, the spin will drop a little bit. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's quite noticeable. It's nearly 500 revs, which is quite a lot. Lower launch, understandable, you know, different profile shaft, two degrees stronger loft. Um, ball speed's really upped and to be honest again it's stronger but that has definitely gone quicker than it should have in terms of like only Even changing two. speeds down a bit isn't it? yeah it's exactly it's a perfect ball. example yeah so like i said it's you're actually swinging it practically the same but you just connecting a lot better um so it's definitely an interesting thing i see smash factor is completely different it's always gonna be lower on a wedge plus a 0.89 to 1.04 is a huge jump so even though the spin's a little bit lower, you are getting that kind of consistency with, you know, a, a good ball speed. Um, and like if you look at kind of numbers so far, um, we've got as an average. Yeah, it's so quite similar really, you know, 16 foot left as an average to 14 foot, so it's practically the same. Um, and that's obviously going one degree flatter so far. But like I said, it's, there could be a few factors in terms of maybe club path, club face, you know, being shot. Um, but yeah, for me, I'm just not a huge fan with the kind of spin dropping already. Um, so I think what we'll do, I'm going to try a different shaft option. You know, slightly different profile just to try and get the spin a bit better, really. Um, what number are we looking for, spin-wise? It's hard to say. When you look at tour pros, they can spin it like silly amounts, you know, easily kind of probably into like 11, 12,000. So it all depends on your technique, really. But, you know, it's, it's going as much spin as you can while maintaining your gap in your, in your set, really. Yeah. That's what wedges are designed for. We're not designed for distance. We're designed to, you know, create a good spin number and get the control. Um, but like I said already, it's, you've kind of gained a lot of ball speed, which, you know, fair enough, but you've then dropped the spin. So then that's really added on a lot of yardage. Yeah. Like, so if you look at kind of your carry, you've gone from carrying it at... 83.6 to 96.9 and again yeah we know the lofts are stronger but i think it's still a fair bit more than it should have been i think like i said the shafts really get a lot of ball speed but like i said it just depends if you necessarily need that you know to get the gap in right yeah. um so i said we'll try something else um i don't want to go we're probably going to go a wedge specific shaft next so we're going to try kbs high rev um, like I said, but don't do that in an iron shaft. That is just designed to be like a wedge shaft. Um, so generally designed to create like a lot more spin, really. Um, so yeah, we'll take a look at that one next. <coughs> so it's, it's glass is one of their stock options, really. Um, but like I said, it's because it's designed to create the spin. Hopefully that can just jump it back up a bit. Um, one thing I will say 
Um, we've gone back to standard length, so we'll just bear that in mind right. as well. Um, Interesting, a bit lower. How does the weight feel? Should we feel a bit lighter again? Yeah, it don't feel too bad. Yeah, so you still got that ball speed. Spin was a little bit better at the time. <laughs> Still a bit left again. Feel a bit different to the Project X? Yeah. That was a better spin. That was a good one, dead straight. Right, let's just see how they compare now. So clubber speed's actually gone up. Obviously, um, we're playing a little bit lighter. We'll just check the swing weight. Like so, it should be now. I think quite similar to what you had currently about right. you know, kind of D one, D two. Just take that tag out. Uh, so because we've gone a little bit shorter again, and the shaft's a little bit lighter. Yeah, quite similar. Yeah, D two, which is kind of standard anyway, yeah. which makes sense being like <clears> a stock <throat> shaft. Um, but like I said, that might help a bit with the feel. Uh, but like I said, you, you can replicate it. We just need to make sure you don't go possibly too heavy with your, with your wedge shafts, like in terms of the weight. Um, but spin-wise, like I said, it, it's quite similar really to that Project X, actually a fraction lower. Um, just so that's low one there, yeah. other than that, I think it would have probably been a bit better. Um, launch, a little bit lower. But again, ball speed's even quicker. Um, which again, it, it's making sure if that's what you need, you, know, you don't want to be getting like a too big of a gap between kind of, I say too little gap really between like your 48 degree and then you know yeah. 54. Like so obviously we, we know that if we bend it to 56, we'll drop a little bit of yardage. Um, but yeah, for me, it's just traveling a lot further than your current sand wedge. That's a 103.8. You were 97 with Project X, with Furnace probably is turn out for now, but we miss it. Yeah, so 102, that's an 84, so it's like 16, I'm probably on that. Yeah, nearly 20 yards further, which is interesting. Did you, with yours, did you feel like you were swinging it full and normal? Yeah. Interesting, because I'd say club head speeds. I mean, it could just be as I've warmed up a bit. I don't Potentially, know. yeah, to hit. <clears throat> Can we take mine yeah, again? Your, yeah, because it, it's quite interesting how it's such a big gap. Um, that's it, for club head speed is the main thing, it's, it's a lot slower yours. Um, yeah, so let me get that back in. Yeah, that's better. Straight away, it spins a lot better. <laughs> Like a tour play with these, aren't they? <laughs> meant, to, meant to get a new wedge to create more spin. So my thinking were obviously changing these is the two years old. Yeah. So I just assume they'll be starting to get a bit tired. In theory, but already the, the spins with them is a lot higher than, you know, a brand new, I will say, I literally took the wrapper off this a second saw, ago. Yeah. Yeah. So the grooves are as fresh as they can be. Um, but it's trying to work out whether it's the grind where it's a bounce, but it's oh, getting right, a better yeah. connection to create the spin. Um, and like I said, obviously that's a spinner wedge shaft, so it's designed to create spin, but like I said, we've just tried that KBS, which is a similar kind of thing in a different brand, and still didn't have that amount of spin. Yeah. Just hit a couple more, because I said distance straight away was better then. Yeah, yeah. It was more spin. It's, we're warmed up now. Gonna knock. Might be a cheap pack in any day. 
Well, that's the thing, end of the day, you know, obviously I'm trying to improve as much as you can, but end of the day, if you're spinning yours a lot more than, you know, brand new wedge, then you don't need to change a bit. You know, like I said, we've got a couple of shaft options to try, but, you know, you just spun that nearly 11,000. Like I said, it, it's, you've still got a good ball speed, now you've kind of warmed it up again and you've hit a yeah. couple. But like I said earlier, that's the point of having a wedge. It's meant to be getting as much control as you can with spin. So there's no point having a, a new wedge for it to just be running on a oh, green. Um, yeah, so it's a bit different. But we'll, uh, like I said, we'll see. What I'm going to do next. So if, yeah, if you have, yeah, if you go one more, then one after more. this, well, I'm going to uh, get it to 56 I just to get a fair. Yeah. See, I think spin wonky, but I think strikes and other, and I think a longer hook could really help. Well, that went the best. Well, so even that one's gone. I mean, yeah, look at ball speed is well down, but yeah, spin. Maybe these are just the spinniest wedges you've ever seen. But it's spin everything. So it's a big factor in wedges, I'd say. Not, it, it's, I mean, it's a big factor in anything, but especially wedges. Like I said, you don't want wedges to be going miles, you know. So I've never fitted a guy where it says, I want to gain... 10 yards on a wedge because yeah. all you do is strength from a loft you'd go right instead of 56 you're going to go 54 yeah. which you can't always do with say a driver because then your launch characteristics change and it doesn't get it as optimum but yeah a, bit, a big thing with wedges is, is spin you know you need to be pitching on a green and, and holding well yeah. um, but like I said in a minute it's quite noticeably you know high spinning if I take out the first few where you're a bit slower um, there we go which one's really Yeah, so let's take them out. Oh, so ball speed's still a bit slower, but again, like, so I'm going to change this to 56 in a second. But yeah, you're averaging 10,000, you know, nearly 10,800 and consistent, which is very good. Well, like I said, you know, you kind of 9,400 or 9,500. It's, yeah. a, it's a huge difference. It's not <clears> like it's a couple hundred revs. It's like 1,200 revs. Yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously, that's made you go shorter, which is, you know, fair enough, as long as you can get the right lofts to get your gapping correct. Yeah. Um, but I said, you know, launch, very, very similar, only a degree higher. Um, but yeah, just at the moment, they're working a lot better for you. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try. And is that a decent launch angle, that? Is that what yeah. you'd expect oh, to say? Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say the launch is good. Um, so I guess the only thing, if you ask me like what we're wrong with, there's nothing really wrong with me existing wedges, but I feel like they do just launch a bit. Um, yeah, which which is, you know, it could be how you kind of come into the ball. I mean, <coughs> I'm going to attack, it never picks as many on here as it does with, so your driver, it's only picked up one at three down, which, again, if you're quite heavy, the odds are young attack's going to be very steep. Yeah. Um, but I think a lot of times they will look higher than they are because of a spin. So obviously it will, it will start you know, going upwards, um, but like I said, again, it's a lot of times people want that kind of flight with flight wedges where it's like launches lower but spins more. But again, I think a lot of that is more technique, you know, trying to get a really yeah. good connection. And like I said, it's a hard thing to do, really. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to try another option. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to go to Nippon Modus 120 now. Um, like I said, a bit of a smoother profile, should definitely spin a bit more than like Silver Projects, which are in your irons. Um, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to set it up to play two degrees weaker on this head to play 56 to get a more fairer comparison, okay. um, you know, with the your current club. Lengthwise, this gone, we've gone a little bit longer again. So I think it's a fraction longer than what the Project X was. Because at the moment I am leaning more definitely towards going a fraction longer. Yeah, so that's. Have I got anything on me? So, what would that be? 35 and a half. Yeah, so that's about half an inch longer. So, if you give that one a go for me. No. Oh, so that was better. A bit better, like I said, because I've weakened it now to 56. Hopefully, it'll be a bit more of a. Yeah, fairer comparison because it doesn't sound much being two degrees different but the spin will definitely be affected a bit more definitely got left yeah a bit left again but again because 
we've gone to two degree weaker. It only lets you do it in standard lie. So again, we've not gone to one degree flat still. So it's gone back to standard lie for now. Like I, said, I just wanted to see one being the same loft to how it kind of compared. It can be, yeah. It's, it's not always a case that you know someone just gains yardage instantly. Uh, but, yeah, certainly not. I mean, in terms of the size of the kit that you fitted have, it is more limited in the ledgers. Yeah, hundred percent. It's certainly more getting the advice and having fit on the ledgers is definitely going to help. Yeah. But as you can probably see, guys, from the video so far, is that you're having to work with the kit that you've got, aren't you? Yeah, like I said, I mean, I'll be honest, I've added about 20 shafts in, you know, yeah. which we didn't get from TaylorMade. You know, when we got the kit, we only had, I think, four shafts supplied to us. Um, and again, it's just, I've just built them up to, to give people more options. Um, but like I said, again, you, you are limited with more shaft options. I mean, I'll be honest, I think with, with the PXG clubs we've got, I've got, there's a lot more shaft options and definitely a lot more specific wedge shafts. And also, because you've got the weight in at the back, you can get the swing weight dialed in a lot more compared to TaylorMade and Tireless and other brands. Yeah. So it'd be interesting if you tried a different brand to see you know, if we could get the swing weight dialed in better or a different shaft, if that would help with a spin and help with a connection. But I think at the moment, they're just not spinning as much as the Clevelands, yeah. even though they're brand new and the Clevelands have been used for quite a while. Yeah. Um, and like I said, it's generally people only change wedges to <clears throat> you know, try and get more spin because the grooves wear down, the spin, you lose the spin, but it's not the case for yours. You, you, you're spinning them clearly more than anything else. Like I said, it's gone up a little bit, but you're still only about 10,000 rev mark where you're like 10,800, I think it is, with, yeah. with yours. So... Anything I can suggest potentially is looking at a different brand and seeing if that would get you, um, you know, the numbers we needed. A quick one. Yeah. Have so a look if you want. Yeah, I'll have a look. Yeah. Like I said if you're open to it. Um, yeah, it just opens up more, more options really. So there's two grinds we do for the sugar daddy. So we do a C grind and a BP grind. So the heel and toe relief are basically identical, but one's a bit higher balance. And I said with you being quite steep, I think you need a bit more balance. So we're going to go to the 13 degree head first. A bit more what? Bounce. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that? Bounce. 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 <laughs> the irony on Gaz picking people up on there. Uh, <laughs> so your accent. <laughs> Where are we again today, Gaz? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I said, I think it'd be worth definitely, yeah, trying. Trying these and just seeing if that makes a difference. But like yeah. I said, because you've got the weight port at the back, um, like I said, they do every weight from two and a half gram to 18 in half gram increments. Yeah. So if we needed to hit a certain swing weight number, it's you easily achievable. That. And like I said, shaft options, I think there's 24 shaft options, including different lengths of tailor made. I think it's 52 I've got for PXG, so it's more than double. Yeah. So again, there's more chance of finding the shaft option that's gonna work. Um, You're going to need so, a sugar daddy yeah. to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, obviously, <laughs> price point, yeah, but definitely are I understand more. Well. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, it does come with more options, yeah. which obviously, if that's what we're kind of needing, then, you know, so be it. We do do a cheaper version, but straight away, no, you've not got the weight. Yeah. So there's no point, I think, going down that route, unless your know, price was a factor, basically. Um, yeah, so we'll have a look. How much spin rate do you reckon them Clevelands have lost? No point. I mean, maybe not a lot, maybe a lo loads, you know. Obviously, if you've not seen the data when you first had them, you know, yeah. they, they could have been like 11 and a half, 12 maybe. It, it's hard to say, but yeah, definitely getting a good spin rate from them. Mm, and I said, bear in mind, it's a sand wedge and it's not a, a you know, lob wedge, which would spin even more. So this is quite a cool shaft, to be honest. Um, this is a Nippon WV, but it's a tour only shaft, so it even actually says on it. But I managed to get some hold of the stock, so it's uh, quite a handy one to have. Mm. But like I said, that's a wedge specific shaft, weight wise, similar to the spinner. Yeah. Um, so like I said, it'd be interesting to see what we can kind of uh, achieve with this one. So I've built up the Sugar Daddy 2 now. I said we've gone 56 degree in the BP ground, which is a bit higher balance. Like I yep. said, with you being quite steep and saying you do catch some shots a bit heavy, it should just make it a bit more forgiving for you. Yep. Um, shaft wise, I said we've gone to the Nippon WV125, the tour only shaft. 
Um, like I said, similar weight to yours at the moment, but again, wedge specific shaft, hopefully try and create that spin. Um, I've changed from the standard eight gram weight to 11 and a half, and that's in terms of swing weight. Now, should be, yeah, spot on. So D5, so I believe it's the same as your driver. Yes. Um, so like I said, yeah, we, we'll get you hitting that first and just see you know, straight away if the spin is <clears> gonna be a bit different number to the tailor made. It's a bit different look with them as well. So they've got it designed it where it's grooves all over yeah, the face. Yeah, full face. It does look so different. it's full face. So again, it's a bit more forgiving where a lot of times you open the face and you kind of cut across the yeah. chip. It just means you're hitting a groove all the time. Spinning as much at minute. No. Right. Yeah, that one was that one were ripped and Yeah, I think to be honest, after this I well it, it was, I feel like I ripped that one. I feel like that one was spinner. But certainly not in one. Mm. So we're going to try last chance and last see chance if we can little... revive something. So I've still gone wedge specific shaft, KBS 610 wedge 120. Yeah. Uh, so fraction lighter than the nip on. Um, but like I said, end of the day, if it's just not spinning as much, then it is yeah. what it is. Obviously we, we've tried everything we can to get a combination to spin more. Yeah. Um, but like I said, if, if we can't achieve that, then you know, just your, yours are fine. Yeah. One thing I maybe want to check is maybe lie angle, but other than that, the spin's you know, really good with them. So well, yeah, at the moment, I wouldn't, wouldn't want them kind of <clears throat> out of the bag. That's thick, you know, fitting videos, it's always great if everyone improves, but sadly, it's not always the case. But I guess the other side to this is, we aren't me coming for this fitting. I'd have just ordered three new wedges anyway. Exactly. So in my mind, I'd be thinking, the two years old. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm very surprised at the spin you are creating with them, with them being two years old. And like I said, it's, you know, for what you'd pay for a fitting, it's that peace of mind now that you've actually saved probably about 400, I mean, what are you getting silly now, aren't you, price-wise? Yeah. You know, at least 400 pounds you've probably saved, um, knowing that yours are fine. Um, yeah, so it's not kind of the end of the world if we can't find something. You've got that peace of mind now. Yeah, yeah. Which is a, definitely a big thing in golf. Let's check. I bet Emma will be sat at home. Uh, happy. Happy. Well, again, you can justify like, the price you paid for the hall. You can justify that a bit more, knowing we not then brought new wedges as yeah, well yeah. as so, or we'll get a free wood shaft instead. <laughs> I'm gonna film the reaction. You can put it on video. Uh, so swing weight is very similar. I've gone D4. Um, like I said, that's not the main concern for me at the moment. I think it's more to see if we can physically spin yeah. something a bit better. Uh, so I'll just change the category in here. Yeah, that was absolutely nipped. That feel good? Yeah. They don't seem a decent stride. I'll tell you what, they may not spin as much, but they feel yeah. phenomenal. Obviously, yeah, you, you can, if you'd want to sacrifice for spin with better feel, yeah. then obviously it's the way to go, but it's not like we're losing a couple hundred revs. We're yeah. losing, you know, sometimes 1,000 to 1,500 revs, which is massive. Oh, hello. Oh, that's that ungone for dear life, that, that last one. Was that a good strike? Ooh. Look at that one for a bit of, <clears throat> bit of action. A little bit necky though. A bit. Smidge. Oh, a thin. I think for me it's more of a consistency with a spin as well. Like, we, yeah, we got one at 10 3, which is similar to yours, but after that it's been dropping back to like 9 and half. Yeah. And it's like, how often are you going to get that really good strike where your Cleveland's at over 10,000 all the time? Too yeah, bad. I can't strike but, it much better than that. But again, it, it's justifying it. You know, it's like I said, the Sugar Daddy's definitely aren't the cheapest wedges in the world. 
And like I said, it's yeah, they might feel nice, but you know, for how much it's costing, you're not gaining anything really. No. All you're gaining is probably feel and having the option to kind of get the swing weight really dialed in without needing, you know, build rebuilding them or lead tape, anything like that. Yeah. But like I said, in terms of performance wise, I don't think there's anything as worth good as changing. your Cleveland. Yeah. There's nothing worth changing. That's the only thing I'd want to check is Double check length and lie because obviously we are both off the shelf and you're sat at fixating quite differently to see if we can improve your wedges even more. But in terms of a new product, yeah, and sadly there's nothing that's yeah. any better, which is what happens sometimes, unfortunately. And if you want something shiny, um, but look how good they are. I know they are very <laughs> nice. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think we'll, like I said, we'll, we'll get you hitting your Cleveland's again. I just want to double check kind of length and lie. Um, see how they're kind of performing and then um, yeah that's it really we're just trying to optimise yours best we can I've put some face tape on just to see kind of where you're striking it on the club face so okay. don't worry too much about the numbers because the spin's obviously got it the spin will drop now yeah. um, but like I said it's for me it's more about the striking to double check what length you need obviously these are standard length yeah, we're saying potentially longer, but um, yeah. we just need to make sure, really. So we'll do the length first. Cool. So, uh, yeah, just a, a couple more for me. What about if I miss tape? Is that good or bad? <laughs> so that shows with, that's a good example. You know, if you've got dirty grooves, that's yeah. a perfect example how much your spin can drop. So obviously we've we've covered the grooves up. If you think you had mud on your face, yeah. that's a perfect example of what can happen to your spin. So that's what I'd probably expected with your wedges. Um, originally, you know, being <laughs> being a you know, like I said, an older older model. So where are they at the moment? You'd think my mate would be a PGA Pro that coach, <laughs> don't you? I don't know, I'd think that very high on the face. Yeah, yeah. I'd, that were a bit of a. Yeah, we'll double check. If it was a bit of a miss hit, then yeah, like I yeah. said, we'll make sure. I mean, in terms of striking left to right, it was quite centred. Shows that it rides up the face because the grip, the grooves can't grab it. Length seems okay. We'll go one more to double check, but in terms of being, you know, toe or heel related, it's very, it's pretty centred. Like I said, if you could argue it's marginally heel, but I definitely wouldn't want to go longer because yeah. it, all it's going to do is bring the heel more into play. I don't think you can see the eggs. <laughs> <laughs> the, the cavity back. I think this tape's done, man. It's a perfect example though, like I said, because you've, we've covered up the grooves, yeah. there's no friction, so it, it rides up the face. Right. So you've hit it and it's just jumping. So the launch angle is like massively higher than yeah, when yeah. you hit it originally, the spin's dropping. But it just shows how important it is to clean your clubs. Yeah, just by covering the face. So like I said, numbers wise, it's, it's more striking related, but it does show you, like I said, if, you, if people wonder why the spin can drop if you don't clean your clubs basically yeah. so it's a good example to show that but I mean, in terms of in terms of striking you know very consistent obviously a little bit higher in the face but to be honest i'd rather go a bit more higher to the top potentially sometimes than low because that's where it gets a bit scabby well, you, thin it. you thin it a little bit yeah so like i said in terms of length i think they're fine um and like i said in terms of line goal we'll double check it but I think definitely not any longer. Yeah, I, I want to make sure if maybe go a little bit flatter potentially. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, I think think at the moment, you know, no, there's no need to do any alteration in terms of like extending the shafts or anything like. That. I don't want to be cutting off your your grips either. No, I don't. Um, yeah, but, <laughs> but yeah, like I said, I think it's just a case of literally we'll check the line now, and if not, then yours are absolutely fine as they are, which cool. you know is saves you a bit of money, isn't it? Of course. Um, yeah, so we'll check the line angle now. Yeah, so unfortunately, um, it's, we've kind of done the most we can do today. Reason being, I've not got my loft and line machine here. It's my other studio. And I don't want to be guessing and getting off a lie board because I'm not a huge fan of them. Nope. You know, you, we can read a bit 
iffy sometimes. So I think what are you best doing, because you're both going to be coming down again anyway. Um, we'll go back to the other studio, we'll get you hitting some shots, we'll bend the line, we'll check it again, keep checking until you know, the flight and connection is going to be correct. Because yeah. the main thing is ball flight. We've seen it's all generally a little bit left. Um, whereas a lot of times could be potential lying goals. So I think we're best doing that instead of kind of guessing, basically. Yeah, no, makes sense. So, kind of exhaust as far as we can go yeah, today, Yeah, exactly. We? We, we've tried everything here. We've tried different brands. We've tried different shaft options, whether that's shafts to match your irons, whether it's wedge-specific shafts. Um, but nothing can beat these. Yep. So, you know, definitely Not don't get rid of them yet. No, no. No, but the, like I said, it's, yeah, the grooves aren't too bad at all. Like I said, it's the crate and a lot of spin, so... You know, definitely more than anything else, quite consistently. Yeah. So, um, you yeah. You have a bad guess there, did you, when you bought them online? There we go. <laughs> well, I, say, <laughs> I, did, I say it could pay off, but like I said, you know, lamp's fine, that's not a problem. The shaft's working well because you're creating the spin. You know, the heads are obviously working well. Um, I said the only thing I'd, I'd want to check when you come back down is just lying, yeah, which yeah. we can do. Um, you didn't mention all about grips there, did you? No. <laughs> he, he well, we'll, we'll dodge a grip, but... Yeah. Um, I've seen worse, don't worry. I've go. definitely seen worse. Um, All about saving money, mate. Well, like I said, I bet you've saved at least kind of £400 if you're going to be going yeah. three wedges and higher end again. So it's a huge saving, which, like I said, a lot of people would do. They, they would kind of expect after two years to lose a spin. Yeah. Um, and like I said, in this case, you, you, might, you may be lost them when you originally had them. They're still spinning more than anything else. So no need to change them at the moment. That's it, isn't it, guys? Honest. Just conclude on that. I mean, obviously, um, it's nice to get some honest advice. There's not every yeah. place you could go to and get a fitting and come out with the same clubs, is there? Like I said, it's, it's great that we kind of gained yardage with both of your driver fittings, but yeah. like I said, it's not always the case with everything. You know, there's going to be always something which is already working fine. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I'm not a wizard and what, can't what fix I everything. What I would say is, is, you've not lost a sale here because Dan will just put that money you're going to spend it on wedges into something else. I just else. said that they do fine. five ones. So we'll be back. That's fine. No, <laughs> like I said, it's, uh, but again, it is putting your money you know, in the right places. I think know. the main thing is as well for you is, is your business will be growing on word of mouth and if Dan were to have got some new wedges and not seen any improvement, yeah. It's not saying a great well, deal. I'll say it's my, my reputation it. as well. You know, I don't so. want to be fitting someone into something for the sake of it being new. You know, it, we've seen it's not performing as well, so why change yeah. anything? All, all the only thing we, we saw as a game was with a PXG was better feel, but nothing else was better. Yeah, it's not worth spending. So it's not worth that. spending that. Well, they'd be way more. They'd be looking probably Shh, don't say a it. lot. Yeah, don't say <laughs> it. <laughs> It'd be a lot, but <laughs> it's not worth justifying anything. No, I agree. Well, there we are, guys. Yeah. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that video. Um, I think it's clear to see that Sam, you know, is great for advising people on fittings and clubs, and he's getting any comments as well. So, if you've got any questions for him, you know, by all means, yeah, far away. in the comments, and uh, we'll stick your details in the description, Sam. Yeah. And hopefully, um, you know, some of these guys. You know, Hopefully someone will gain some spin and uh, yeah. yeah, and let us know when you do. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching guys and uh, we'll see you in a few days time. Bye. Yeah, oh good. Like I said, just cheers, Matt. It's alright, just being honest, isn't it? Yeah, you yeah. can't can't win everything. Like I said, there's no one more surprised than me. Yeah, it, it is surprising. Um like I said, it's a very different video to what I thought we were gonna do, but Yeah, I mean I don't know, if someone says to you, you've got two-year-old wedges, do you think you can improve, man? I'm sure 90% of the time you'd be like, yeah. Yeah, normally. Well, yeah, there would have been no doubt that, you know, they wouldn't have been improved, but, yeah, it just couldn't be it. So it is what it is, isn't it? Go. But like I said, it's, everyone's different, you know, some people gain loads, some people gain bugger all, really. It's just, um, depends on the individual. Yeah.